friends, this is Tracy Shine Bright here, and I'm your diamond painting bestie and your Poshmark girly. And look at this mess. Well, people have questions on work areas and what's yours like, and this is the side of my dining table. And I have a lot of projects spread out through this, and I've really got to pick them up and clean them up. But the problem is, is that that means I have to finish projects. So I did confirm that Coral Reef Island indeed does fit the area I have planned for it above the TV. I did an unboxing on that in my prior video, so if you want to see that, feel free. But I'm going to keep this real for you here today to show you what it's like for me trying to meet my diamond painting goals while working full time and being a dog mom of five. Today, I'm really tired from the 4th of July. It was yesterday. I've done some things, but I'm really feeling tired. I'm feeling low energy, kind of like just cuddling up in a little ball, relaxing and cuddling with my dogs all day if possible, but I haven't been able to do that. So I've decided to keep it light today and just try to keep moving and whatever it takes to make myself happy. So I went to the grocery store. This is so bad for me. And I got Reese's Big Cup with the extra peanut butter for my work area. I got, I have a tiki theme for the summer, so I have these fun little straws that are real cheap on Amazon, and a Coca-Cola with Sonic Ice. So yes, that's, it's in the afternoon, it's not morning. I was out of my beloved Frappuccinos this morning. So here I am. I'm gonna go through a little bit about how I kit up, and then I'll do a time lapse for you if you're interested in seeing it um, full motion. So hopefully, um, you can get some ideas on and thoughts on the kitting up process, whether you're new to diamond painting or whether you've been diamond painting a while. So let me know in the comments, how do you kit up? What do you do to kind of treat yourself when maybe you're trying to motivate yourself because you're just feeling like you're having a lazy, tired day? So I told you my Reese's and Coca-Cola with Sonic ice and a flower straw. <laughs> So, okay, so the first thing I did was I just tried to gather everything that I needed. I put up the canvas, I hung it on a hanger. Some people might put it back in the box or lay it flat somewhere um, in a storage area. But since I know I wanna get this in my whip rotation, I went ahead and put it on a hanger. It is so long um, that it's kind of difficult to manage. My dogs are behind me outside some doors. They may make some noise, I'm gonna let them in. Here they come. Okay, so um, the first thing I do is I try to get all my stuff together. I unboxed it, I put the canvas up, and now here I am, I'm taking the drills out. I've got this big pile. I got my, I got my favorite stuff. I got my kit I'm gonna use. And so, um, you know, so I'd say what? Put up, unbox, put up your canvas, get your workspace together, um, get your kit up system, decide what kit up system you want. I've decided I like Elizabeth Ward's system the best because I can stack them and I put labels on the side so I can see them because I have a lot of whips in my rotation, so I need that. Something else might work better for you, depending how you do it. But, so for that reason, I had this extra kit. I couldn't find the lid for it at the moment, but, that's okay. I know that there's 12 littles in a row. So almost all of this kit, because there are 67 colors. So, you know, when you decide your kit, look at how many spaces you have. Think about if you want it all in one container or two, if there's a lot, 67's an awful lot of colors. So almost everything I have, even if I have a lot of drills, is gonna go into the small ones that I will identify the drills that have a lot and I'll put them on the side and then at the end I'll use bigger containers for the ones with more drills. Um, this kit is really nice because I'm in my glasses <clears throat> because you have these wonderful stickers and they're gonna fit the containers really well. If you don't have stickers with whatever kit you're working with, then you're gonna need to make some. You might buy some stickers online, you might use something you already have, but you wanna get the symbol on there 
and you want to get the DMC number, this first number, one, two, three, four, five. It's just really kind of a checklist for me to make sure I have them all if I want to put them in order as I go. So I'll know if one's missing and that works out well. Some people, if they don't have stickers, they might print theirs in color and then use a clear gloss uh, tape over it to put it on containers. Some people print in color on some kind of sticker printers. I find that some of that's just too much. Um, thankfully, most of the companies I use do come with stickers and they fit pretty good. Sometimes I might have to trim them to fit the container better so the little stick them doesn't stick out and get you know, fuzzies and stuff. I did in preparing my work area, I got extra boats. This is the kit that's really great um, from Dreamer Designs that they have with their stuff. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, that's the little separator. That's really fun when you're working with some drills and you wanna leave them out for a long time. But when it comes to kitting up, I find that usually I don't wanna use a larger size than this because I can spill drills and really just, like this one's a super gloss resin tray. These two are what I consider standard size whites. This is a, one of those a little bit smaller than standard size whites. I really think just the standard medium size white trays that you get free, you know, so many places are best with the spout pour. See, it's a little bit longer there and I can just work with them quickly. I'm. Oh, I do like to do, I forgot to grab this, but I can use this Dreamer Designs one. I do like to get a bigger tray to put under my tray. I'll show you. Sometimes it's a little bigger than this one, but what happens is if anything spills, then hopefully it's gonna get caught in the larger tray because that does happen. So see, it'd be like this. And then I pour it in there and then just in case, and then when I pour it in, it'll be over here. So maybe it'll catch anything if I make a mess. So yeah, so I got my double tray stacking system. I got my stickers, I got my candy, I got my dogs, my glasses. Um, a lot of times I like to turn on YouTube and watch different YouTube videos, especially the other diamond painters. Um, I like to listen to what they say and what they talk about and a lot of other topics and interesting things as well. Um, a couple weeks ago, we had, um, my favorite topic, oh, I'll just tell you while I sort this, you can see, oh, there's so many of these. You know what? It's almost just not manageable with these long screens. So I'm just gonna cut them down, paying close attention, separating them to not separate two of the same. Like 823 is our dark navy blue. That's a standard color that there's a lot of, like 310. So I'll put that there. Yeah, so. I'm gonna separate them to start off with. Anyway, like I said, I when I get my area going, I do that. As far as watching YouTube videos, um, I sometimes follow current news stories. Like two weeks ago was the Titan submersible. Um, going down to visit the Titanic. And you know, if you aren't familiar with the story, the Titanic, I believe it was found around 1985, the submerged wreckage was found. And people have been taking submersible craft and going down to see the wreckage. James Cameron, who has been down like over 31 times, maybe 33 times. He's the director of the Titanic movie. He's been down there a lot. He even chimed in on this submersible situation because with the submersible, um, it was by OceanGate. And the CEO and main pilot of the group was Stockton Rush. That almost doesn't sound like a real name, does it? But he claimed he could trace his ancestors all the way back to uh, the Plymouth, the founding fathers. Like he, he really had a lot to say and you can see what he says online on all kinds of things, but he did not believe in following all the safety protocols that are set up to protect people, such as the type of materials that are used to construct this submersible craft. Um, there's a lot of pressure underwater and the Titan is 
located 13,000 feet uh, below sea level. And so um, that's a lot bigger than the Grand Canyon. It's about two and a half miles. And it's just a, a really, I mean, I, I don't know, two and a half miles doesn't sound far considering how fast I could go on my little e-bike the other day. But um, going underwater, the you're way below the zone where you have any light whatsoever. So it's completely dark, it's cold, it's just pitch black. And, um, you know, I'm, so, I'm in my 50s and we studied physics and all of that in school about gravitational pull and whatnot as you go up in the air into outer space. Nobody ever studied the pressure and the pull of the forces when you go underwater. And underwater really is just a huge undiscovered place. But what can you say? There's a lot of pressure and it's dark down there. So I heard one person say on all the video reports I watched that he would compare the square inch amount of pressure on that vessel or anything down there to be the equivalent of two full grown large elephants standing on your thumbnail. So if that, uh, if the strength of the materials to build the submersive is not strong enough, <laughs> it's not gonna be able to withstand that. And there's being able to withstand it once versus being able to withstand it multiple times repeatedly. And that's just, you know, hard. So he was using a carbon fiber that had not been tested. And interestingly enough, there's so many reasons why the actual Titanic sank. One lady was talking about the materials in the rivets when it scraped the side of the iceberg that the rivets was supposed to have steel, but they put in some iron or some wrought iron in it, which has the same strength with forces going one direction, but not if forces come at it a different direction, unlike steel. And so that's one of the reasons, when it, one of many reasons why uh, the iceberg was able to successfully take down the Titanic. <laughs> Anyhow, Okay, got that. There's several on here with two packs so far. A lot more than I thought, but I don't, I, what am I saying? This is a huge diamond painting. So, oh yeah, here we come. Give me three tens. Well, there's only three packs of three tens in here. Whoa. Anyhow, back to <laughs> the Titan submersible. So it was going down on a voyage to take five people, Stockton Rush, the owner of Ocean Gate, was going to be the pilot. So obviously when he says how safe this thing is, he really believes what he's saying because otherwise, you know, why would he take a chance with his own life? Anyway, he had a very experienced, um, expert of sorts who was um, very familiar with the wreckage of the Titanic with him. And then they had three passengers, two of whom were just self-professed adventurers. And so one of them, one of them was Hamish Harding and he was a billionaire from the UK and he liked to do things like this. The other one was a Pakistani businessman who it was Father's Day over that weekend and he wanted his son Suleiman to go and his son was only 19 years old guys and guess what Suleiman didn't want to go but from all reports namely his, his aunt um, this man was really obsessed with Titanic. Like people would come over and he'd say, oh, I got a four hour documentary of the Titanic on you guys. So I get it. That guy was so obsessed with the Titanic. He was going to go down no matter what, but 
he took his son and that really just breaks my heart that poor 19 year old who didn't even want to go anyway who goes down there so crazy thing i mean you guys may already be familiar with the story and know but you know the the submersible descends it takes about two hours to get to the bottom after about an hour in 45 minutes, it lost radio contact. And spoiler alert, the Navy had heard, picked up sounds of the vessel imploding. And that implosion is from those forces I told you about hitting that hull, and the hull was not strong enough to withstand that kind of force. So it imploded, and as far as having a quick death, um, that was probably, you know, what people are saying was the best way than if they'd lingered, lost without oxygen and died that way. Because the craft had limited, a limited supply of oxygen and everybody was bolted in and they couldn't get out unless somebody on the outside um, let them out and did the bolts. So it was terrible, but you know, they knew that. Um, James Cameron was even talking about it, about how, you know, he read it, he knew exactly what happened, it imploded, but they carried on for four or five days with this big rescue mission, even whoever was speaking on behalf of Ocean Gate, with them making comments and being so hopeful and optimistic, like, yay, maybe we're gonna find them alive, we haven't lost hope. Well, come on, the Navy picked up the sound of the implosion at that location and all communications ceased. So it was pretty obvious, but it took up a whole bunch of news. And meanwhile, um, there was a lot of other news things going on and there's conspiracy theories like, oh, you know, that took the public's attention away from the Biden impeachment or, oh, that took the public's attention away to all these emails on Jeffrey Ein <laughs> Weinstein and his underage girls or of age girls or whatever they were visiting God, who knows who. And those are all very, very interesting topics, but it's true. I was so wrapped up in the submersible. I didn't pay attention to any of that. And a couple times I started trying to look and I would get distracted with pop-ups on other things. So, I don't know, have any of you guys been following or did you follow the case of the, the Titan submersible? Um, anyway, because I was really into this on YouTube, now YouTube is recommending all kinds of um, documentaries on the Titanic and those are kind of fun because I made a big list of all the reasons why the Titanic sank. And there's probably even more than what I listed or that I forgot to list. So, but hey, most of you are probably familiar with that. If not, hey, history, um, you might check it out. It's pretty cool stuff. What do you think the number one reason is the Titanic sank? I can tell you mine. Do you want to know mine? Okay. My number one, well, not just that it sank, but it, let's say that it sank and ever, so many people died. You know, the largest contributing cause to the death of so many. I don't, there's a lot of really good ones to pick here, guys. So there's no right or wrong answer here. If you've looked into it, there are a lot of really, really good answers. But one, that I think really kind of teaches us all a lesson or is a nice reminder to be nice, I guess, is that the telegraph operator was working late. They didn't get paid much working for, as a member of the crew, they made most of their money um, by sending telegraphs for passengers and they paid extra to send letters home. So he was working late, you know, just after 11 p.m. And there was a nearby ship, the Californian. 
who had sent several, I keep wanting to say, if I say texts, I'm so sorry, they're telegraphs in my mind, I go, text, text, I kept sending texts. Okay, that would be the uh, a modern day equivalent, one modern day equivalent for a person, not necessarily for vessels in the um, ocean, <laughs> but, you know, they sent a message, several messages, warning of glaciers, and they had told them, you know, to alert the captain and that, um, there was a field of glaciers and there were so many, they weren't gonna travel anymore. They were stopping the boat for the night period so they could see better. And the captain of the ship was expecting what he called growlers. And growlers are small, very small icebergs, but they're hard to see. And so it would be really easy to inadvertently run into one or hit one. And so the lookout was paying special, was really paying special attention for growlers. Well, there had been a change in weather unlike had ever happened in that captain's lifetime. And a very large iceberg had broke free and had made it far south into the shipping lanes where there are very rarely any icebergs that size. So, you know, the staff, you know, this guy was not properly trained. The staff wasn't properly trained. The captain, by experience, wasn't expecting any type of iceberg by this size. Um, but the Californian sent him a message about it, and he interrupted, basically told him to shut up, leave him alone. He was busy working, sending messages for the passengers. I mean, how rude was that? And he, he was... I think even ruder than that with how he you know, did his little do 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 back. Um, so the captain of the Californian told his operator to just turn the machine off and go to bed for the night. And they did. They turned their machine off. They went to bed. And that machine, they, different reports say they were anywhere from 20 to 40 miles away. But that ship, had they kept their machine on, they would have heard the distress calls and they could have been there and every single person on the ship would have been saved. Isn't that incredible? I think it's absolutely incredible that had that ship been there. And can you imagine having to live that down as the captain? I'm not sure, I, don't, I saw something that made me think maybe one of the um, telegraph operators lived. I don't know that it was that one. Needless to say, the Californian, there was Senate investigation and there was testimony taken, but there were a lot of records missing from the Californian to explain what they did or did not know about the sinking. I'm sure that everybody on that ship had a lot of guilt to live with for the rest of their lives because, wow, that was over. So there was approximately 2,200 people, approximately 700 were saved you know, everybody else died. You know, there are about 300 and some people more that could have been saved if they'd put more people on the lifeboats, but the captain had canceled lifeboat training that day. So yeah, just really such a terrible tra tragedy. And after the Titan sinking, it, it makes you think, well, maybe they'll get some tighter regulations. Maybe they'll make some technological advances in underwater exploration which could benefit us all, I hope. But, you know, I just feel so bad for Suleiman, that, that poor boy. Anyway, did any of you follow that? I what am. did you think of it? At the point where I am ready for my kit up to start, I cut these, put them, you know, I try to pour them directly in here if I can, but I'm gonna put it on time-lapse so you can see it if you want on how I do it. But I start by separating the bags. I kept the bigger ones together. And I'm gonna work on all these smaller bags and then decide what to do on this. And you can see how I do it if you want. Okay guys, if you're cutting up a big one and space is an issue to try to make it fit in one kit, which now I always try to make mine fit in one kit if at all possible. And this with 67 colors is a close one. Um, there's probably just no way on a diamond painting Deutschland one. But, you know, this one it is possible. So you have to be ready to store your drills on the side. 
So these are mine. I'm just gonna put tape over those ones that I open. I used to kind of really worry and obsess and really think about what size container um, each individual drill pack would fit in, but I don't worry about that anymore. I just look at what size availability I have. There's four different sizes of these with Elizabeth Ward. And I found that buying extra smalls is worthwhile. You can get kits that are all smalls or an assortment. And so it's good to have both and extras. And I have a lot of extras, as you can see. And so I have two colors that have three packs. That would be nice if I could put it in a large, but larges are really big. So this is the next size up for the smalls. This is the next size up from that. Here's one I kept out from my Enyas Guerrero <laughs> that was just as black. So of course those are circles. This is a square, but you can see how much bigger that container is. And I have some of those around too, but I know that just, I have one, one, two, three, four, five, um, colors left. I got these two into smaller ones. They had two packs, but one pack fit in here. So I went ahead and did that, which was a surprise. Let's see, you put it in, oh, there it goes, 43 and 29. Okay, so now I have one, two, three, four, five left. And looky there, that's not, much space so I could go one two three four Ooh, that won't work so hmm. I would like to not have to use a little for these but I don't know I might have to one one two three four yeah I'm gonna have to that is one heck of a full, full kit. I mean, maybe I could get, see, I got a little extra there, there. I mean, I could probably fit one of these in if I worked it. So I just go through, I think five, oh, there's a six, I think. I don't know, it'll be hard though to figure it out. The more you have to maneuver them, you might have to change the order from one to solid and then it gets difficult. So that's why I save the big ones to last if I have one kit that's near full. A lot of kits, this isn't gonna happen and you may have plenty of room and you can just put them in any size you want to your heart's content, but this this kit was really good because it was a close call if you're trying to make it all fit. Okay, guys, so honestly, that was probably the fastest I've ever kitted up before. And I think just going to pour it directly into the container. And then if you noticed, I did like a backhanded pour. So the drills were coming towards me so I could tell when to stop trying to fill it. But yeah, that was just, I can't believe I just did 67 colors that fast. I think it's just that I know not to spend time worrying about certain things and just go for it. And there's my package, it's all together. And so next thing I do to prepare is I washi tape my canvas. So I'll show you all about that in perhaps the next video. It's a really big canvas. If you have one um, as well, where you've gotten yours kit up, you know, pick your washi tape and get ready. and. I'll show you next how I washi tape it. Thanks guys, shine bright, bye.